Welcome back to the City University of New York's Academic Technology Podcast. My name is Adam Wand. I am a professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, where I serve as faculty fellow for online education. I am also the chair and senior researcher for the CUNY Skunk Works Academic Technology Research and Development Group. We're really fortunate to be here today with Helen Kyer. Helen is the manager of support services for John Jay Online here at the college, and she has over 20 years of experience in higher education. So thank you for joining thank us today. You. Thank you. So, Adam, I have to say thank you for having me. And one of the things I've enjoyed most about working with you is you've taught me the value of Twitter in education. I have been using Twitter in education for quite some time now. I started using it just to reach out to my students to get them more involved with social media. But what I really found was Twitter was a great way for me to report back to the academic community some of the things that I was finding with academic technology. There are so many great things out there. When I find them, it's really good to be able to go out and tweet them. I also really like Blackboard's um, Twitter site because on Blackboard, they give out a lot of uh, training materials for their, their podcasts and their segments, and they just tweet them out to the community. So whenever I want to learn something advanced about Blackboard, I could just go right to their Twitter site and see what they're tweeting about. Another good thing is, I mean, besides the fact that they do keep in touch with their client base for service outages and things like that, so you stay up to date with what's happening yeah. there, but you also get to find out what faculty and students are doing at other colleges just by simply following different hashtags. And that's really important for yeah. us. Today's episode is going to be on LMS systems, learning management systems, and we're really going to be focusing on Blackboard because Blackboard is what CUNY uses officially. Can you tell us a little bit about CUNY's Blackboard? Blackboard is a critical service for all of CUNY. Currently, we are Blackboard's single biggest client for this type of educational segment. We have 24 CUNY campuses loaded to one production environment. We have almost over 600,000 users. That's absolutely incredible. It's huge. The only client in comparable size is the country of Columbia. Wow. But it's Three, three servers, we have testing environments, we have staging environments in which we're constantly doing development for new features that we're going to be rolling out, but it is a mission critical service across the university. Tell us a little bit about your first interview. Today I'm going to be talking to Jarl Jonas, the manager of academic services for Course Sites. CourseSites.com is Blackboard's free product. It can be an important way to see what's out there. I love CourseSites.com by Blackboard uh, because it really is a good service. You can go on and use their latest Blackboard and play with all of their features and it's open to the public for free. Um, I definitely think people should go there and try that out. Uh, and we have a second interview after that. On our second interview today, Carlos Guevara of Hostos Community College is going to be speaking to Catherine Lewis, a member of his faculty about how she uses Blackboard in her courses. I, I talked a little bit about, uh, with Catherine before the segment and she does some pretty incredible things so I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. She does pretty interesting things because she's a graphics instructor. That, that must be pretty yeah. good. Uh, and then we have a demo after that. Our demo for today is going to be Alan Winson, from a member of the faculty here at John Jay and at York College, and Wenying Huang Stolte from York also. They're going to be demonstrating Blackboard Collaborate for us. Well, hopefully during this podcast we're able to educate the community a little bit more on Blackboard. And let's get to start that right now. Let's get to it. Welcome back. We're here today talking with Yarl Jonas, Director of Course Sites for Blackboard. Welcome. Thank Thanks you, Helen. Thanks for coming. Can you tell us what Course Sites is? Sure. Course Sites is a free, hosted online platform powered by Blackboard's technology, a combination of our Blackboard Learn technology, Blackboard Mobile Learn, and Blackboard Collaborate functionality, so that any teacher, no matter where they are, can try out Blackboard's technology at no cost. So do you need to have Blackboard to use Course Sites? Absolutely not. And basically it's meant for any teacher, whether or not they have Blackboard on their campuses or other systems that might be in use. But most importantly, if they don't have anything on their campus, they then have something to supplement their course, either in a hybrid capacity or perhaps teach a full class online. Sounds great. What, why might a school who already uses Blackboard, why would they want to use Course Sites? It's a great question. And what we've seen since we've launched it a couple of years ago is the biggest impact we have had is on campuses with Blackboard technology. It really enables those 
bleeding ed teachers or instructional designers to have a place to go see what Blackboard's technology or where it's going. We are promising to keep course sites up to date at least within 30 days of our latest release so teachers can experiment, they can practice in a safe environment so be, when they, their campuses do upgrade, they're familiar with the technology and it's a much more, uh, I would say, quality use when it comes to it. There's a lot of features in course sites. What are some of your favorites? What do you think are the most useful features? Wow, there are so many to choose from. <laughs> I would say, first and foremost, one of the best features that I've seen uh, that we've released is what's known as course structures. And what happens is when, an, when a teacher goes in and signs up for course sites, uh, they can set up a course and they're immediately presented with an option of 30 course structures or, or templates that they can organize their course. Not many teachers are familiar with the online learning paradigm, so this gives them a kickstart to the course design process. We have teachers who are teaching on a weekly basis, or perhaps they're following a textbook, so they can set it up by chapter, or we have a science teacher that wanted to have some lab involvement, or some social learning. Teachers that want to experiment with new types of teaching methods. I went in and I was looking at some of the course structures, and one of the ones that immediately jumped out for me were the social constructivist learning paradigms. And it's, it seemed to me that that would be a good entree for a, a professor or an instructor who's not familiar with those pedagogical techniques Absolutely. to experiment with them and see how they might fit their teaching. Absolutely, and, and that was one of the key uh, points that we tried to also involve in the structures, not only kickstarting the instructional design for the teachers to save them time, but also to introduce them to new methodologies and take some proven structures that have worked across a lot of client sites and just enable them with different pedagogies that they can try out. Again, in a very safe environment on a, on a course sites platform, and then they can go ahead and put it in action for real. You just mentioned across universities. How many colleges and users do you currently have on course sites? Great question. Uh, so since we've launched a couple of years ago, we have over 50,000 instructors that have signed up from over 12,000 institutions in 159 countries. And they are teaching approximately 450,000 students on the platform. So it's just an amazing um, experience to be able to be a part of such an initiative that has worldwide impact uh, in education. Can you tell us about what are some of the great ways you've seen course sites used? Absolutely. So outside of just the ways that teachers are leveraging course sites to teach students and give them access to materials, I would say one of the biggest impacts um, and most important ways that we've seen course sites is used is to, in, to enable our current clients to upgrade. There's a lot of challenges on campus at many levels, at the student level, at the instructor level, at the administrator level, to go ahead and, and upgrade Blackboard technology. Not that it's difficult, but there are some change management aspects to consider, like training. What are the new features? How will teachers get used to it? Are the administrators prepared? So Course Sites enables them to go ahead and play around with the Course Sites functionality or with Blackboard technology, again, in, in an experimental environment, and get used to it. We also have some embedded training and support so that they can go ahead and call our support members or go ahead and participate in self-paced training to get used to these tools and figure out ways that they can then implement them into their class. We've had uh, a very a large number of clients who have come from uh, I would say a lower number of our past versions of Blackboard, like Blackboard 7.3, and they were able to make the leap all the way to Blackboard 9.1, pretty much with ease, having a, a number of faculty go through our training on course sites and just get used to it. And it, it really reduces the fear and trepidation of what yeah. that new upgrade is going to be all about. In all my years of working in technology, I think it throws a user when they see a different interface. Even though all the features and tools they'll use are still there, if they're located in a different way or a button's yeah. labeled something differently, there's, it's a shock to the system that they're not sure that they, what they know how to do will right. still apply. So I can see how that could be really useful. Absolutely. What other new features might we expect to see in Core Sites in the, in the near future? Well, as I mentioned, we are trying to keep Core Sites up to date with the latest Blackboard Learn functionality as well as the mobile and, and collaborate capabilities like voice authoring. So uh, I would say in the next couple of months, you're going to see a lot of features that focus strictly on faculty efficiency as well as increased student insight. Uh, in particular, we'll be releasing a retention center, which extends the current early warning system, enabling instructors to create rules to monitor students automatically to see who's performing at levels above or even or below what the expected performance objectives are. And, and gives them ways to notify those individuals, either you know, in individual or in bulk, pretty easily. That could be really useful, particularly in an online environment. 
Absolutely. And I think, again, you'll also, just to hint at what's coming, see some best, some better improvements to our grading workflows, as well as to the assessment capabilities. Thank you. My name is Carlos Guevara. I'm the director of the Office of Educational Technology at Hostos Community College. And I'm happy to have Professor Catherine Lewis today with us. Uh, professor Catherine Lewis is a uh, professor in the Humanities Department, and she teaches in the Media Design uh, programs. Uh, a little bit about Professor Catherine Lewis. She just got a National Science Foundation grant, together with Professor Rhee Shad from Hostos as well, about gamification and how these uh, gamification concepts are applied in the STEM uh, disciplines. Welcome for being here. Thank you. Nice to be here. And uh, with that, I'm going to ask you the first question. Um, why do you use Blackboard? I use Blackboard um, because really you need a space for students that stays the same all the time, where you can put resources and where they always know that they have access to the resources you've created for them. Um, I would love to say that my students um, take copious notes during class, but that has a tendency to not be the case. So I know that if I post resources for them on Blackboard, if I update them on what their homework is, if I um, provide them videos, if I provide them links, then um, since it's linked institutionally to um, our students, they always know where to go to find information about the course. Excellent. So tell us a little bit more about how you use Blackboard. What uh, technologies, what tools you use from Blackboard? Sure. Um, I happen to teach two different types of classes. One of them is the in-person class, and I use Blackboard in that case to house all of my resources for students, whether it be videos I've made or um, YouTube videos that um, help them with tutorials for design applications um, or lectures that I've created in PowerPoint and then uploaded to SlideShare and posted on Blackboard. Um, in addition, every week I update their assignments so that they know where to go. They have a list of you know, tasks they have to accomplish and when they walk in the next week, if they say I didn't know how to do that, it means they didn't go to Blackboard and check off the list. And I also teach an asynchronous class. And in that case, Blackboard takes on a much larger role um, for everywhere from housing my lecture videos to being the center of discussion for the class um, to also um, I use Blackboard Collaborate um, along with the lecture videos that I've made to give lectures where students are able to participate and ask questions. Um, and that new technology and this new version of Blackboard has really added a new dimension for my online class. Excellent. And you mentioned that you use a lot of new features from Blackboard. Have you encountered any difficulties with uh, students not being able to use these technologies or any resistance from them? Sometimes it's hard to really identify the type of resistance or difficulty that you're getting with the students. Um, I find that it could be 50-50. Sometimes they don't want to seek out the answer to their question, and sometimes they are truly confused. Sometimes I am truly confused. Simple issues that are easy to resolve, though, are really what I've come across. For instance, the Blackboard Collaborate previously recorded videos. You have to search a wider variety of dates, and then the videos come up. But until you've had that obstacle to overcome, you don't quite know where to find it. Um, but once they experience um, the interface for maybe two or three weeks, they usually can rock and roll with it and solve their own problems. And luckily at Ostos, we have a great educational technology area where I feel very comfortable sending them to have their questions answered in person if I'm not available. Given that uh, recently because of uh, the weather problems or other type of disasters, uh, how do you think that uh, using Blackboard in this case helps to helps for academic continuity? Sure. It's a wonderful place where students know where to go. And you can update. Um, I had to update that, you know, 
with the storm that was in New York recently that I had no internet and that I was borrowing services and that I would be logging in later. Um, and what was really exciting is because of this storm, uh, professors at Ostos that had not previously used Blackboard became aware of it and aware of how it could serve their, their needs as well. And so it will be exciting to see how Blackboard use will increase, even if it's simply providing a space for announcements and a syllabi for students. Um, I think that it makes them feel more comfortable in a situation where communication has gone down. Um, they know that if they can access Blackboard, that that's the first place that their professor is going to contact them to update them on the situation. So we'll see in future semesters um, whether professors that jumped on board in response to the storm will continue using it, seeing as you know it is a wonderful resource that is ready to go and provided for them. Excellent. I'm sure we can uh, we can. Um make use of your uh, skills to help other faculty to get engaged with using Blackboard. With that, I want to thank you for uh, coming here and, and, and uh, sharing this useful information with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I'm Wenying Huang Stouti. Working at Yale College as an instructional technologist and a Blackboard administrator, my primary jobs are to explore the advanced technologies and applications in classrooms, as well as to train and support faculty in integrating technology into their curriculum. I have been working in this role for over 10 years. Hi, my name is Alan Winson. I'm a professor at John Jay College and at York College. I've been teaching online um, both writing and communication for many, many years now. And I'm going to be talking about my experience in using the Blackboard Collaborate Virtual Classroom and the various tools that are associated with that and how easy it is to use in my writing research class. And so I think we can get started. Sure. Okay, so here we are uh, in my um, Blackboard Collaborate Virtual Classroom. I use this uh, classroom to meet with the students uh, of my writing research class. This is an upper level, upper level junior and senior research writing class. We meet once a week on Sundays this semester to go over the work that was completed the week before and to review the week that's coming up. I use these um, um, slideshows, and I'm just clicking through some of them now, to review the work that's, uh, that, that is due uh, th that week. Uh, I also use the uh, Collaborate uh, Virtual Classroom to have meetings with students and to go over the drafts of their papers. Um, it's, it's very easy to do so by sharing my desktop and looking at the papers with the student. Now I have uh, one of my students with me, um, Sangeeta is here, and uh, there she is, and she's going to be talking to us just briefly about her experience, hi, hi, about her experience in using um, the um, this virtual classroom uh, this this semester, and she's done quite well with it. So, Sangeeta, how was this? How, how was it using the webinar? Um, this was a very beneficial experience to someone taking an online class for the first time. So, um, because it created uh, a classroom-like environment, even though students weren't able to physically be with the um, professor Winston. Right, and uh, what what did you find was the most difficult part about using uh, the the webinar, this virtual classroom? Um, probably um, people not being able to maybe um, maybe get their microphones on, you know, just mechanical stuff like this. Right, but once once they once they got that worked out, the communication was pretty pretty easy, right? Yeah. Yes, it was. Right. Right, Definitely. and we also, we also went over a draft of your paper, and uh, was that helpful? We did that online for you? Uh, yes, it did, because it, uh, you told me specifically what I needed to do, instead of you posting notes to generalize, like uh, generally to a classroom. Um, you, you know, we had a one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation, so it was very helpful. Right, thank, 
thank you very much, Ms. Angita, for sharing your experience with us uh, and um, how, you know, how we use the Blackboard Collaborate virtual classroom for our writing research class. And you have a good, a good vacation. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. That was a really great conversation with y'all. I've known him for several years, but it never ceases to amaze me that it, there's always something new for me to learn from him. And, you know, I really enjoyed listening to Catherine Lewis and the stuff she was talking about where during Hurricane Sandy she was using Blackboard to keep her students informed and in the loop. I think that was really actually illustrated one of Blackboard's strengths is that you can constantly stay in contact. Well, we hope that everyone learned a lot this podcast about academic technology, especially Blackboard. And we hope that you join us in the future for another episode of the City University of New York's Academic Technology Podcast. Thank you for joining us.